Today we continue with our class Chalachas uh, of Yom Tov. We start with, uh, with what? We start with Sefer Chofetz Chaim. <coughs> and um, it's very interesting. Somebody asked me this question uh, just, I think, yesterday. Um, Sefer Chofetz Chaim. Um, big topic is the same for victims' benefit. And uh, today's topic, uh, consumer protection. Consumer protection is an important but sensitive area which allows the information to be con uh, conveyed letter Ellis for constructive purpose. If the shopkeeper, so that's uh, the, the question that was asked about the, uh, are we allowed to, to leave commentary and read commentary um, on a Jewish website, right? The, uh, the, the owner for sure is a Jew, right? So that's, uh, that's the thing. Or is, or is, or is yeah. And then there was another comment, uh, the, 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 another question, but uh, I mean, the, the, the most relevant to this discussion, so you know the owner is a Jew uh, or of the shop or shopkeeper or uh, um, manufacturer, okay? If the shopkeepers, uh, shopkeeper hands a customer too little change uh, or charges him uh, for something he did not purchase, one must be assume, one must not assume that the storekeeper uh, is dishonest and careless, and all um, all makes uh, and um, and we all make mistakes. So I, I guess in olden days, not I guess, but I remember in olden days they would uh, they have these uh, scales, and uh, whatever. Uh, of course, I cannot uh, calculate that fast as they could. Could. So it shows you the amount, but uh, they, they just and they quickly take out from the scale, start wrapping and give it back to you and say how much is it. I mean, unless you say like exact amount. So if you if you take the whole piece or whatever, so I mean, uh, you have, I mean, at least the eye would not have, have no idea how much it costs and how much they change and this and that. So it was like, but today's today cash uh, register and uh, it's very simple. So you, they, they enter how much you gave, and you see the change, like how much change you allow you, uh, they should give you, and you see the, the weight, right? How much uh, they, they charge, right? They, they, they copy from uh, from this uh, uh, from the weight if if it's a different system into into the cash register. Otherwise, it's a integrated system. Right? But in olden days, it was like disaster. So just because somebody did not give you enough change, right? Um, does not mean that the person is uh, dishonest. Uh, people make mistakes, right? Or maybe new person or something. Okay. But but here here it says a storekeeper. So a storekeeper, he maybe maybe he has experience. So so to say that he's new is a little far fetched. Okay. If this happens often, one must bring the matter to the sh shopkeeper's attention and inform him that uh, if the practice continues. One will have no choice but inform the clientele. Okay, so you tell them nicely. So, you, Mr. Shopkeeper, you stop doing that. Otherwise, I'm going to tell uh, others, right? If the situation still does not change, one is required to warn people uh, from uh, people to count their change carefully and examine their receipts for any mistakes. And I remember it uh, like many, many years ago. Not too far from us was a store, and it was uh, owned by one guy. His mother was helping, and she was not such a, a nice lady. She would give like her, her own change for sure. She would add items, two dollars, three dollars, one one feature, something like. So twenty years ago, it was a lot of money. So that's uh, and wrong change for sure. That's uh, it was uh, like she's no longer there, but uh, but they, they everybody still remember her, like the way she behaved. Um, it is forbidden to um, in institute that insinuate. It is forbidden to insinuate that a man is dishonest, even if one has a reason to suspect so. Uh, since it is uh, sufficient for the people to think that he is careless, so careless and dishonest two separate things. So careless, uh, of course, he must be more careful. But uh, you just check your change, and that's it. Right or has a problem with uh, his arithmetics, exactly. Especially in olden days, today is uh, when, when uh, he, they display uh, how much uh, the change they should give. It's much easier, of course. Um, 
uh, for them to take the uh, so for them to take the necessary precautions. Okay, uh, it would also be forbidden to inform hot-headed individuals uh, who, for example, might vandalize the store in the name of justice. Okay, that that's uh, such a crazy people. So we should try to be careful. Okay. Any questions on what we said? Okay, no questions, no problem. So I'd like to start with Sidur because I, I'm not sure how long it's going to take. Uh, and then we go, to, the rest of the time, we're going to go to the laws of Yom Tov. Okay, so we start from the beginning. This is the Shacharis. Okay, so in, in the morning before, before the blessing, everything is the same. No problem. So the changes start. So I uh, apologize. So we're now in a 10 days of repentance from Rosh Hashanah until Yom Kippur. And there are many changes in our prayer. So the first change uh, in our morning uh, prayer is actually on the page 83 uh, in this R scroll seeder. R scroll seeder. Okay. 83. So <clears throat> it's after, after we concluded. Um, Suki de Zimra, right? Uh, like a conclusion blessing is called Ishtabah, right? Ishtabah should call it Moki. Right? That's, uh, that's the blessing. But, uh, but on, um, in these 10 days of repentance, we actually um, add one more uh, psalm, Shira Lamalus. So a song of ascent. It's a psalm number 130. So right before, so if uh, a person pray, prays in the minion, so it's before the Kaddish, or if a person prays uh, by, or he or she prays by, by themselves, it's actually uh, before the Shema. Okay, so that's the first change before, um, in these 10 days of repentance. Okay, continue. So Shema is the same. So all other uh, changes, not, not all, but most of the changes are going to be in Shmona Esra. So if we um, <clears throat> open our uh, books on page 99, so uh, let me know if you, if, you, if, if you need more time or something. So page 99. So that's the uh, beginning of the Shmon and the first change is already in the first blessing in Patriarchs. Right? So... Um, so after the, the words, uh, his just one second, and, and bring the Redeemer uh, to their children for his name's sake with love, right? So, before the last blessing, before the, the, the last uh, uh, blessing, Magen Abraham, uh, shield of Abraham, so you say this, uh, this ex, uh, ex, uh, like extension, and it's, it's in a gray uh, uh, area. So it says, remember us for life, a king who desires life, and inscribe us in the book of life uh, for you for, for your sake or living God. Right? It's Zachrein uh, Lechaim. So Zachrein Lechaim, I mean, in English, it's uh, two, two, two verses in, in, uh, in Hebrew, it's only one. I mean, uh, it's uh, one, one line. Doesn't matter. It's the same, same, same word. So, but uh, e even if you forgot this line, for example, so that's why I said I taught myself to, to forget uh, Shmon Esra because otherwise it creates all of the problem. So I would, when you know Shmon Esra, by heart you would skip these lines for sure. And uh, I, I'm trying to, especially in these days, like to read from Siddur, like word by word, so I would not miss any, any of this. So, okay, but if somebody skipped, no problem, does not need to go back, but if sages of a great assembly instituted this uh, verse to be there, so we understand that it's very, very important for us. Okay, continue. Then, the next blessing, the second blessing, God's might. Gurus, mm, right? And um, also, before, uh, before the last uh, ver uh, the, 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 before the last blessing, Mechaecha right? Mechaecha So, meaning uh, um, who revives uh, the dead, also in a great uh, box, it says, Who is like you, merciful Father, who mercifully recalls uh, his uh, creatures for life? 
because he keeps a fly. Micha mocha, right? Micha mocha. So, and um, second blessing. And that just so we, we understand what, what's going on in the shul, right? First, uh, we pray by ourselves. And then the chazan goes uh, over the repetition of Shmanesra. So he would pause. For, for example, he, he got to the... Um, uh, to to this uh, new insertion, right? Uh, where the, so he would pause. We say first, and then he repeats. So that's uh, that's what we do in, in the show, right? But uh, but when you pray, pray individually, you you just say everything. Okay. So second uh, second thing, and uh, also if a person forgets this insertion, does not have to go back. Continue. So next piece is very, very important. Uh, it's on page 103 in my Siddur. So it's uh, the blessing holiness of God's name. Atokadosh, right? You're, you're holy and your name is holy, right? Atokadosh, Vishim Kadosh, right? So that's, uh, that's the thing. So uh, we usually uh, add this blessing, the holy God, Right, but uh, to uh, these uh, ten days of repentance, of course, it's not ten; it's uh, less. But uh, just for us to understand, so it's uh, uh, the Holy King, Melach Hakadosh, Hamelach Hakadosh. That's uh, that's the change. So if person did not say Hamelach Hakadosh, so he has to or she has to go back all the way to the beginning of Shemini. I mean, it's not that much, but uh, it's like only a few blessings. But still, it is very very important. Uh, that uh, to remember that okay just means, okay continue so the, the, uh, then everything is the same the same the same and all other okay another change so in a, in a blessing a restoration of the justice Hashiva Shoftein Right, so restore the the judges. Um, so we say instead of um, the king who loves righteousness and judgment, we say the king, um, the king of judgment, Hamelach, Hamelach, Hamishpat. Right, Hamelach, Hamishpat. Okay. So in, instead of like all of this, I don't know, have several words in Hebrew. It's only four. Sorry, but you still substitute with two. No problem. So in, uh, in English, it's uh, um, one second, one second. Okay, the king who loves. Okay, five or six. So and we we said such a big king, a king who loves the, the king of judgment. And um, if somebody forgot to say that, no problem. He can continue. She can continue. But but when it's said, it's very very important not to forget to say that. Continue. Okay, we skip this. Okay, in the next uh, blessing, uh, page one, 113, it's that thanksgiving, where when we say modim in this part, so it's also you have uh, addition. So after modim is finished, so then not finished, I apologize, before finish, um, it says on page 115. Uh, when, when we say for for all this may you may may your name be blessed and exalted out king continually forever and ever right well kulam is barach right so that's uh, that's uh, so there you just add and inscribe all his children uh, of your covenant for a good life so if person forgot no problem does not need to go back. One fifteen. Okay, was Madim next? The next, okay. yes, go ahead, please go ahead. Sorry, uh, I don't, I don't have the the arch procedure. I have another one, uh, the forty one. Okay, but it's it's like pretty much the same. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, the, the same. Last, yes, yeah. Uh -huh. Besides the last part that could I'll just describe after the. Modim part. Indeed, yes, uh -huh. I believe my my sidur doesn't have it. Is that the end of the of the of the modim? No, 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 it's not. Article? It's not. No, no, no. It's it's not the end. It's it's before the end. So the the end is. Uh, 
Uh, one second, how does it end Madim? Yeah, it's 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 not the the, the end is um, modim is um, is uh, where, where, where is it? I, I said in English, it's, it would be easier for everybody. So you have uh, um, your name is the beneficent one, and you fit in, uh, and it's uh, fitting to give thanks. Hatov shimcho ulcho noe la dois. Right, that's uh, that's what it, that's how it ends. So it's like four lines before that, four lines before oh, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just you see it? Yes, yes. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's like no. I mean, not in my, in my siddur. It's not like in the part when when we say modima nasnu, but in the blessing that starts with vi halelu vi barehu. Okay. All right. All right. Yes. Okay. Maybe maybe there. Mm -hmm. And uh, the end, and they said the holy name and mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. That, that that's okay, uh, but so that's uh, that's the end of end of the modim. Yes. Mm -hmm. And before uh, right before this blessing is it says that say uh, a blessing that starts with Yes, Tovim. Yes. Is this the one? Yes, 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 yes. So uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Usab la lachaim tovim kol b'nei berisecho, meaning uh, uh, write, inscribe everything. That that's uh, uh, that's how we wish everybody before Rosh Hashanah to be to be inscribed in the Book of Life. So maybe it's a little different, but uh, I, I'm, I'm telling you, that even if try to. Even if you use different cedar, but it's all in the same blessings, maybe you have different layout, does not matter, it's, uh, it's still there. Should be there. If not there, it's uh, not good. Okay, so then we continue. And the last blessing is Shalom. Right, you have a Shalom blessing. And then this Shalom blessing also, we substitute the, uh, the last line. Just one second. Somehow it's not clear here. I'm so sorry. I'm not sure. Okay, no, we, I apologize. We do not substitute. Here we do not substitute. We just add. Right before, um, um, before, before the, the concluding, uh, concluding blessing of the peace. So I said uh, in the book of life, blessing and peace and good livelihood, maybe we uh, remembered. And inscribe before you, we and your entire family of Israel, for a good life and for a peace. Right? And uh, okay, so that's uh, that's very important. And if, of course, if person forgot the, this uh, um, this verse, uh, two, I don't know how many two, two verses, no problem. Does not need to go back. So, but it's of course it's proper for us to us to be written in the book of life. Be sefer chaim beracha. Shalom, right? That's uh, the book of life, blessing and peace. Of course, you want to bless yourself uh, with these things. Okay. So, and then you uh, end uh, the Shmona Esra. And um, okay. uh, one second, one second. I am uh, that one, one piece is extra, so I'm, I'm going to skip that. And um, also, we say Avinu uh, Malkeinu, not on Shabbos, but uh, on all other days we say Avinu uh, Malkeinu. So it's our Father, our King, and it's on uh, my my Siddur, It's page uh, two, uh, uh, one to one, right? Uh, so you say Avinu uh, Malkeinu, and on the bottom of the page you would see the the split, right? Because uh, we say different verses. Of course, you, you you may have different layout, but uh, but uh, just pay attention. Like uh, in the middle of this prayer, approximately in the middle of this prayer, um, yeah. So you have uh, the, the different versions. One once uh, one version that, that we say on a community fast, right? On all of the communal fast, we also say Avinu Malkeinu. Except the phase of Gidalia that uh, that uh, that passed, 
and uh, from Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur we have the different verses so just pay attention so it's Avinu Malkeinu, Avinu Malkeinu, all of these beautiful things so we have to say it of course and um, when we say it in the shul we open the, uh, the Aram Kodesh when the Torah is asked uh, so that's how I miscalculated today uh, my schedule because uh, you know all of these verses take time to say and uh, plus um, plus when um, uh, so, some of them um, responsive like uh, Hazan says one and uh, th then we repeat he says we say and uh, it's very interesting so it takes time so be careful okay so that's uh, that's that so Tachanun we say as usual whatever it's uh, Monday or Thursday there are no changes then one second Uh, uh, some of the day also uh, everything is the same the only dif difference is that we that we um, that we say one second 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 uh, this psalm number four, uh, 27 one second I'm not sure where is it psalm 49 should be here Hmm. I'm not sure what's going on. One second, I apologize. It's not in this cedar. How is it possible? Maybe it's a different place. One second. I apologize. Um, I have to look. I, I don't want to hold you. I, I'm not sure why it's not there. It uh, like uh, in my different Cedar, it is there. It, in all of the Cedar, it should be there. It's Friday. Okay, okay, I apologize. I mean, that, that's, uh, I apologize for, for, for the confusion. Page 171. I don't know, like two, two different comments that threw me off. Okay, so it's, uh, yeah. Le David. So Le David, it's uh, Psalm number 27 in the great box. And that's what we say from um, from beginning of Rosh Chodesh Elul until the Shmini Atzeres. So, so Shmini Atzeres, it's like... Uh, a day before last of uh, Rosh Hashanah, uh, Simcha Torah. Okay, so we say this uh, 27, Psalm 27. So, and um, for Mincha, um, for Mincha, we, uh, everything is, is exactly the same. We just add uh, the same uh, things in uh, in Shmona Esra. But after, after we finish Shmona Esra, we have to say this Avinu Malkeinu from page 121 and uh, the rest is the same as uh, Sephardim if I, uh, if I remember correctly they say this Psalm 27 in Mincha as well um, I'm not sure if they do it in Marik but uh, um, Ashkenazi custom is, uh, they say uh, this Psalm 27 on Marik, on Marik. so like, everything is the same just addition for uh, in the Shmon Esra, whatever we, we mentioned, and Psalm 27, and um, that's it. So that's overview of this uh, like special season. Special season meaning mean five days, six days. Okay, on Shabbos, uh, we don't say we win more but we say 20, Psalm 27 for sure we say. Okay, any questions on what we said? Yes, go on. Yes, please. Um, I don't I don't think I found the part of the Psalm 27 in mind. So it could be. So if uh, one second, one second. It. So if 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 you have a Sephardic Siddur, it could be like standard uh, after after um, after Alain Le Shabbat. It could be there. Because oh, so this is right at the end. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's very very end of chapters. Yes. Very very end. Yes. 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 
Absolutely, yes. It's right, right at the end of the yes, right after Alain Le Chabert. Exactly. Like so okay, so so Sephardim say every day, but Ashkenazim say only in this period and uh, after after the psalm of the day. I mean, uh, but uh, see, as as I said many times, I I prayed in this. Uh, in this uh, congregation, this, I mean, it does not matter. Like you, you just pray with you see this, some things that, that switch places, but some some different endings. So like whatever is, you must answer out loud, you answer out loud and just keep keep to your yes. seat or you're good. There is a same, it's not like different religions. So we're yes. very, very close. Yes. 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 yes, I actually remember that I, I prayed every day at the end of the, I just remembered. Mm -hmm. And I like it a lot because, especially for converts, because it has this part, the psalm is beautiful actually, it has this part that says, uh, please Hashem do not abandon me, before mm -hmm. my father and my mother have abandoned me. Mm -hmm. This is this is beautiful, especially with those yes, in yeah. present conversion. Yeah. Also, someone has a question on the, on the chat thing. Yes, go ahead, please. Sarah says, uh, Shalom Kodagab, do women also say Tachanun? So women are not obligated, okay, 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 okay. so let, let's step back. So women are not obligated to say Tachanun, but if they want, they they can pray, If, uh, for example, if women have time, they are allowed to, to pray the, the whole uh, prayer. There is no problem, right? But is it obligated? Absolutely not. But before the Tachanun, so I, I skip one one thing because uh, I didn't find it uh, necessary. But since we asked about Tachanun, so the very important uh, thing is uh, page one nineteen. It's actually page one nineteen. Uh, they call B, A and B. So it's actually Vidui. So Vidui confession. Uh, it's advisable to say. Uh, you're not obligated, but uh, it's advisable to say. It's in the, for Ashkenazim in a great box. Because it's uh, optional for, but Sephardim say it for sure uh, in the, the um, in, in a show. So I, I do say it, but I say it only half. So and if you, if you read instruction, you see where, where the half stops, because uh, the rest is uh, like um, thirteen principles. 13, uh, Hashem, Hashem, right? So this we do not say unless we have a minion or we know how to say it in a, in a tune of the Torah. So for me, there is such a much pressure. They pray so fast, so whatever extra I can skip, I just, and not skip, like extra, extra, I just don't say. So I say only half of the vidui. Okay. And then that, all of the vidui, but not uh, the 13 principles. Okay. That's, uh, so women, of course, women can say whatever they want uh, from, from, the, uh, from, from the prayers. There is a minimum requirement and uh, there is extra, nobody is going to stop you, basically. Okay. What else? Okay, we have one question here. Go ahead. Thank you, Rabbi yes. Shalom. Mm -hmm. uh, my question is if a, a woman can can say in her mind, in her mind, the thirteen uh, attributes attributes of mercy. So okay, so as as not not as uh, okay. So th this uh, certain attributes of mercy, just just so you know, it's uh, it, it is taken from from the Torah. Does it say from where? Uh, okay, so okay, okay, okay. Okay, so I I'm not sure. Uh, yes, yeah. I mean, yes. Yeah, okay, okay. So I mean, we just read it. Not not. Too. Not too long ago, <laughs> right? Uh, so it, it, it is from the Torah. So it's not if it's not uh, part of the vidu. Yes, you you can say, but vidu is like special power. Uh, it's actually we intentionally do not say it correctly, believe it or not. So it's a long story, but it's summary. Um, so Ashkenazim don't say the correct verses, right? Intentionally, but they fall on their hand. Right. For example, if I would wear tefillin on my left hand, so I would put my, my hand like, like this, right? And uh, that's um, not vidu, I apologize. It's not vidu, it's a tachnum, right? So I'm talking about tachnum. Uh, so part of the tachnum, when uh, put our, we put our hand uh, head down, so Ashkenazim don't say uh, the, the right verses, but they uh, fall on their hand. And uh, Sephardim do the opposite. They uh, say the right uh, 
verses, but they don't fall on their hand. Why? Because it's very, very dangerous. You can uh, you can kill people with the, if with using uh, this, this intention. And there are examples in the Gemara. You understand? So it's very, all, all these very, very powerful prayers. So we just uh, try to do it from the cedar and uh, with the uh, right intention. Okay. What Thank else? you, Kapil yeah, You're welcome. That's a good question. So if but if you say these uh, 13 principles like out of the context, as a learning of the Torah, you can learn Torah like uh, same psukim you say many, many times you want. So that's uh, um, that's that's that. Okay. What else? It's on the bottom of the page. Any other questions on the cedar, on the changes uh, for this period? Okay. So just uh, follow the the instruction. All right. So we continue then uh, with uh, those of Yom Tov. And our big topic. So we're in chapter four, and our big topic is. Uh, are preparing on Yom Tov for the next day. So part number three, and it says, increase the amount of product uh, with which one does the melacha. Okay. There is an exception to the prohibition of performing melacha for the post Yom Tov uh, benefit. Okay. The Gemara states in a tractate Beitza 17a, a woman may fill the entire pot with meat, even though she need only uh, one piece for Yom Tov. A baker may fill the cask uh, of water and cook it, uh, even though he needs only uh, one jug for Yom Tov. The reason this act is uh, permitted and uh, is that uh, uh, preparing the large quantity involves the same action in, um, as preparing the small quantity. Cooking a pot that is uh, full of meat which is a place in, in a stove or a kindle in a fire beneath it, requires the same act of cooking, uh, cooking a pot containing one piece of meat. Similarly, uh, filling the cask of water requires the same action as filling a jug. Since one is allowed to do the act for the sake of uh, preventing um, training to the small amount, which will uh, be needed for a yom tov, there is nothing wrong with adding the measure with which one does, does it, even though the ex excess will not be used for the, until the next day. Um, this is known and as ribui uh, bishurim, uh, increasing the amount. Okay, it is permitted whether one one will use the excess on the second day of Yom Tov or on the weekday. So, okay, there is a limitation to this dispensation, but let's, uh, before we, we get the limitation, so let's try to see the, um, the basic rule. So, the general idea here, so if you are going to use exactly the same effort, uh, it, like in cooking, in cooking things, so it, it, is, it is not a problem. So, I guess, the, in my mind, the same efforts, for example, if you have these uh, pieces of chicken, they're already all cut up, everything is ready, everything you have to do, like uh, put in a, in, um, in a pot and on, on a stove and it's going to cook. So, for you, it's exactly the same efforts, it's not hard, uh, right, it does not uh, take too much more extra time, there is no problem. Right, so that's uh, that's what they say because it's going to cook by itself. It's not like, especially now, gas stove or electric stove. Right, it's not like uh, we're doing something extra. There is no problem. Okay, but uh, of course there is uh, um, reservations, as, as we're going to say. I see, but okay, maybe it's going to cook for same like with the same effort of, for cooking. But if you need to prepare thirty uh, use of thirty minutes uh, more for preparation, of course there is a problem. Okay. Um, so let's do from the beginning and we're going to explain uh, line by line. There is an exception to this prohibition on performing Laha post Yom Tov benefit. So if, uh, so what we said last, last time, if you, uh, if you planned for the next day, for, for like for after the Yom Tov, and even from one day to another, it is absolutely forbidden. One explanation just to remind if somebody just joined us today. 
um, one one uh, one reminder is that the first day is uh, uh, biblical and second day is uh, rabbinical in, in Yom Tov. Somebody in this group, uh, I don't remember, was uh, surprised about Rosh Hashanah. Right? It says clearly in, in Torah, so in, uh, on the first of Tishrei, have to sound the, the shofar. It's not, it did not say it's first and second day. Right? It's only first day. Okay, it doesn't matter. So first day is for sure it's uh, biblical. And second day is rabbinical, uh, and it's not even rabbinical, it's tradition, as we said. It does not make any difference. Uh, the halacha is exactly the same as, uh, as uh, on the first day and the second day. Right? But uh, since in some sense uh, the second day is not uh, of the same sanctity as the first one, so you cannot, uh, so in some sense, we know that it's actually the weekday. It's not, okay, we treat it as not a weekday, but we know it's a weekday, it's not holiday. Holiday is only one day on a biblical level, so you're not allowed to cook on a holiday, on the first day, for the sake of second day, right? And, um, one second, and for the second, the second day, so when, when we start cooking 3 p.m., let's say, right, uh, on, on, on the first day of Yom Tov, so for sure you're going, you're cooking for a second day, for sure. So you you, you just finished meal two hours ago, nobody's hungry. Well, who, who are you cooking for, right? And plus, there's no obligation to eat the third meal on, on Yom Tov. On Yom Tov, you're obligated to eat only two meals, right? So at night and during the day, that's it. So on Shabbos, we have an obligation to eat three meals, but at the end of two meals. Okay. Continue. Okay. But but if but if it, it is, a, for, for example, uh, a woman is going to cook at night or in the morning, right? So she, she woke up for five in the morning, let's say, right? And then she wants, wants on Yom Tov to cook. There is no problem. So all of this, uh, as we said, one piece of chicken or... The 20 pieces of chicken is uh, exactly the same effort if if it's the same it's not it's not such a simple case but let's say if it exactly the same effort everything was in the refrigerator she just put from uh, one container into her pot so there is no problem add water and spices I mean it, it's exactly like uh, she put these spices one time or three times irrelevant right so and uh, it is uh, uh, technically technically all of the 20 pieces of chicken could be used for 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 this day there is no problem so that's uh, the case we're talking about if it's too late in the day close to the next day who are you kidding continue uh so uh, um, gimara in states and baits are 17 8 a woman may fill the entire pot with the meat even though uh, she need only uh, one piece for yom tov a baker may fill a cask of water and cook it and cook it right okay even though he needs only uh, only one jug okay so he needs only one jug but he can uh, cook much more okay because for him it's uh, the same effort so I guess if it's not so if it's not big uh, burden to carry this water from from the well so okay uh, if uh, maybe one jug you would be able to carry in your hand if you need only one jug just just uh, trying to uh, the, the village uh, visualize the scenario, right? So it's uh, there is no effort you can carry in your Shabbos clothing, in your Yom Tov clothing. But if now you, you say you I have to ca carry two buckets, yeah, that's uh, that's the problem. I'm not going to use my Shabbos clothing because it's very heavy. I might get dirty and stuff like that. So I would uh, change or something. So that's uh, that's a big deal. The reason these acts are permitted is that uh, pertaining to a larger quantity involves the same preparing a large quantity involves the same action as preparing smaller quantities so everything in his house so to put uh, on, on, on the fire uh, water like uh, on one jack or or seven jacks so it, it does not make any difference for him right so we're not talking about coming from well but everything in his house okay cooking uh, a pot that is uh, full of meat that is placing in a stove for, or kindling the fire Kindling is exactly the same. You need to start the fire. Whether it's a huge pot or a small pot or right, does not make any difference. Uh, kindling is the same. Uh, one second. Uh, requires the same act of cooking. A pot contains one piece, uh, uh, one, one piece of meat. Okay. Meaning one piece or a full uh, uh, pot of full, full of meat. Similar filling cask of water requires the same action. 
fill in the jug. So let's to simplify. He does not have to carry from 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 far away. Let's say from uh, uh, from from. Uh, from the faucet, right? So to, to make it easier, since uh, one is allowed to do uh, to do an act for the sake of pre preparing the small amount, right? Uh, which is uh, which will be needed for Yom Tov. There is nothing wrong adding uh, to the measure for which one uh, one does it, even though he exceed uh, the, the excess will be used for the next day. Of course, you 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 have no right to have an uh, to have. Um, intention to uh, that it should be for the next day you you just cook right you cook so it doesn't matter so sometimes people trying to save money like especially like uh, um for example i in, in some places where like not where I really for but in different places they have all this gas and uh, uh that does not come through, through the pipe they see the pipe but they, they have like huge tanks or like sometimes not such a big tanks so they have, they try to save on on gas, right? Because it, it costs a lot of like to replace or something, right? So they so they if they were going to open the gas, so they try to cook as much as possible. So which is uh, in intention is not for the next day, but uh, just to use it efficiently. Okay, so this is known as increasing, increasing what? Increasing the measure at the amount. It is permitted whether one will. Uh, um, whether one will use the excess of the second day uh, on Yom Tov or, or on the weekend. So it's not exact. Again, you should not have intention when you're going to use it. You just cook because it is uh, convenient and does not uh, require many efforts. But uh, I asked the, the question, I don't remember who might be asked, like, uh, like for example, when I came from Rosh Hashanah, Maybe, maybe ask my wife. I don't know who is. So, uh, like, I, when I came from Rosh Hashanah home and we started one hour early in the show, I can, I was exhausted. Like after after we ate, like I was uh, dead. Of course, I would uh, learn Torah, but to, to say that I have energy now to start cooking, or if she would uh, pray in uh, like the full prayer, she would have the energy to start cooking. That's uh, not realistic. You understand? So that's uh, that's practical aspect of it. Okay, continue. So let's do the limitations and we see if we have any questions. So limitations, so we have the full picture. Limitations on the dis, uh, disp uh, dispensation of the increase in the amount. A. When employing the dispensation of increasing the amount, one must be careful not to specify that he is preparing the extra amount for the next day, but should add it without saying anything. Okay, so exactly as we said, don't, don't have any intention that's okay, so now I cooked and uh, for the next three days, five days I have food. So don't don't say that. Okay. And B, according to Sampa scheme, the rule of increase uh, the amount applies only when, uh, when excess is identical to the original item that one adds on Yom Tov. For not one needs for Yom Tov. Uh, in the example provided by Gimara, when the woman cooks full pot of meat and the pieces are equally uh, suited uh, to uh, to fulfill her Yom Tov needs, right? So I mean, all of the, the same or the same quality, I guess. Thus, uh, although she uh, does not need all of them, she is not cooking anything that is certainly unfit for Yom Tov use. It follows that one may uh, carry um, carry the entire bag of potatoes through the public domain, even though he needs only a few of them, since they are all fit for fulfillment of the Yom Tov needs. Okay. So let me see how. Okay, so let's let's finish, then we go back. However, one may not do the melacha uh, with the extra item that is unsuitable to fulfill uh, for fulfilling of Yom Tov needs. Thus, when one needs to carry uh, his house key in a public domain, he may not carry the entire key ring that contains other keys as well, since the, ex, uh, the excess keys are totally unsuitable for Yom Tov needs. Uh, in this situation, one is not doing the melacha with additional amount, but with entire uh, useless additional object. 
Uh, further details, the laws of concern and the amount uh, discussed in chapter 11, cooking. Okay, chapter 15, transporting. Okay, so we're going to get to it. We're going to only in chapter uh, 4, so let's do this piece from the beginning and we're going to explain. So, I mean, uh, this uh, uh, li limitation to this dispensation. So, first we said, and we, we, we explained ourselves. Um, so a person cannot have intention to use it for the next day, period. Or the next day, or whether it's when Yom Tov, Shabbos, or weekday, it does not make any difference. Okay, and B, which is very important, according to Sampa scheme, the rule of the increase, uh, the increase in the amount applies only when um, the excess is identical to original items that needed for Yom Tov. So meaning maybe, it's uh, I'm, I'm just saying, maybe not all of the pieces they would uh, put... Uh, on the table, right? So it's not all of the uh, pieces uh, uh, like um, looks good and they're presentable that you would serve the guest. So some pieces uh, you would, uh, for example, maybe they're not as good, uh, not as straight, maybe like uh, whatever. So you you would not put uh, in front of the guest, but uh, in your family circle you would eat. So these pieces would be like uh, not uh, would not allowed. Okay, if you have guests, if you if you eat it, these pieces even with the guests, so there is no problem with sale. Okay, so one more time. So the, this was came rule that the increase in the amount applies only when excess excess is identical to original item that one needs for in the other. So added, and uh, identical means that uh, uh, in um, in, uh, in practical uh, usage, right? So if it's for you, that doesn't matter. Of course, if a person uh, uh, cook chicken, so different parts of the chicken, but it's obviously useful, right? Uh, for example, provided the gimaram that the woman cooks full pot of meat and all pieces equally uh, suited to, to to fulfill her yom tov needs. Okay, so of course we're trying to 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 put on a, on a table like the the, the best uh, pieces, right? So maybe 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 some pieces would not be suitable. Thus, although she does not need all of them, she is not cooking anything that is clearly unfit for Yom Tov meat. So even though, even if she cooks, I don't know, seven pieces, ten pieces, fifteen pieces, but all of them are suitable for like uh, she, she would put uh, on the table a lot, like fifteen pieces, and let's say there are three or four people only, right, in the family, so they they take whatever they want. There is no problem. So I mean, that, but they they can choose from fifteen. Right, and uh, then he gives the uh, example from potatoes about potato bag, like uh, let's say like a huge potato bag, but a bag full of potatoes. But but uh, you you take only five or six potatoes. There is no problem, two potatoes, whatever. But all, all of them are good. So you just choose the best one to use for yom tov, since all of them are suitable. No problem. However, one may not uh, do melacha with an extra item that is unsuitable to uh, for fulfilling the yom tov needs. As thus, one um, thus, if one needs to carry extra house key to the public domain. So if you have on your uh, key ring or a car key and garage key and this key and that key, and uh, that's that's a big uh, problem. So as we said uh, many times before, try, try to like if you allow to carry on Shabbos or you 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 leave your key outside somewhere. So just make uh, as many keys as you want. You need only one copy. For example, like on, on Shabbos we use. Only we, we lock only one door. You know, so we, we, uh, we lock only one door, so there is special lock that uh, that we put in our like uh, like outside. I, I leave the key. There is no problem. So I leave only one key, and uh, I carry uh, only that key because um, another issue: the the rest of the keys are mukze. So I cannot uh, I cannot take my car key or my I don't know. Whatever key, my toolbox key, or whatever, right? Even I don't have, but let, let, let's say I do, right? It's extra, I, I, it's mukta, I'm not, I'm not allowed to carry it. Okay, so I needlessly say Yom Tov in public domain. Thus, in one needs to carry his cow skin in the public domain, he may not carry the extra key ring that contains other keys as well. Okay, so since other keys are unsuitable for Yom Tov. Um, in this situation, one is not doing melacha for uh, with additional amount. So additional amount it must be similarly useful for yom tov. But uh, this uh, carrying, I think it's a very good example. They're not useful. Okay, but uh, with the entirely useless additional garbage. 
Okay, so do we have any questions before we continue? I think I, I saw the question. Really? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Yes, go ahead. The question that I have is just that I, I didn't understand uh, clearly about the pieces of in the yogurt example uh, about uh, with the food or preparing the food. I didn't really understand uh, clearly. If you could uh, go over it again. Okay, okay. So, so we said that um, if all, all of these uh, pieces, for, for example, chicken, are useful um, for to be served. Uh, for for example, the three 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 people in family, four people in the family, right? Let's say small family, right? So, uh, if uh, if all of the pieces are suitable to, to be eaten and to, to be put put on the table in Yomtov, so yeah, you can uh, cook uh, like even though people usually eat one piece of the uh, two two pieces of chicken, so you can cook as, as many as you want, so they can choose. There is no problem. But sometimes, for example, you have a chicken and the leg is broken. So on Monday, Tuesday, there is no problem. I mean, it's, it's, the chicken is kosher, but to put it on a table in Yom Tov, uh, usually people don't. You understand? I mean, even they uh, eat for, with, with one's family, so to, to, to indicate that it is a Yom Tov. So this one piece of chicken with a broken leg, so it's not suitable for uh, to be cooked as extra. You understand? But but if, uh, if all of them, all of them, like, different size, different this, different that, but all of them are suitable to be eaten, there is no problem. You can cook as many as you want. Again, don't have intention that it is for the next day. Have intention like to, to, to have a like, full table and pick whatever you want. Okay, that, there is no problem. People like to pick uh, themselves the pieces. That's, that's, that's normal. After all that food is uh, cooked, let's say after you finished, and you didn't have intention for it to be the next day, you could, uh, you know, put that food in the refrigerator. Yes, yes. Back yes. again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What else? Thank you, Rabbi. Yeah, you're welcome. Question. Anything else? Or we continue? Hello. Yes. Yes. Go ahead, please. So, is that the person uh, cooks a lot of food? but some intention of, uh, uh, let's say the person in the back of his head, he knows that there's going to be leftovers for other days, not only Yom, yom Tov, but for a longer period of time. But he wants to do Chuba about this after the fact. Mm -hmm. So why does he have to do that? Does he have to throw all the... No, 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 since it is allowed, so don't, don't throw all the food. I mean, don't do it again and that's it. So just just to remind us to put it in a perspective, we're talking about situation when person cooks on Yom Tov, on Yom Tov itself. So before the Yom Tov, so if you cook for uh, two days and plus uh, whatever, whatever extra days, there is no problem whatsoever. We're not talking about that. We're talking about cooking on Yom Tov. But as I said, like uh, this Rosh Hashanah, I came home like uh, after we finished meal. Stuff that, I don't know, it was like uh, the, almost 3 p.m., like 2.30 or something. So I went to blow, blow in the show for this and that, almost 3 p.m. And uh, my mincha was the 6.35. Like, when exactly you want to cook? When? You understand? So, and uh, women uh, usually, I mean, uh, even they, they have shorter version, the one uh, like, to, to do the, the first uh, shorter version of the prayer, but still, like it's a text that you do not read the whole uh, year, so men have uh, have a big advantage, uh, right? Uh, before the women, before because we, we know the text, even though like it's compilation from different places, but some some like you when when you see familiar text, you so you read it faster. So many pieces we just know by heart. Why you 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 read it like every day or on Shabbos, like every week. So I understand, but, but for a woman, even if she would skip some part uh, on the dominant, let's say, I don't know, maybe she would say one hour, but uh, but still not uh, maybe one hour and a half, but that's it. It's still uh, a lot of more material to it. So say that she she woke up in normal hour, uh, did all of these uh, five hours of prayers, 
and then she can cook and like after the meal can cook uh, it's not realistic it's not so but if a woman that does not pray for example in all the days so they, they did not know how to pray so that's uh, that's what's different so that uh, they would have time time to cook so i guess uh, that's uh, the case we're talking about okay so i guess we can stop here and go to the questions Okay, any questions on what we said or we did not say? Uh, some quick mm -hmm. questions. Um, Go ahead. There are three questions on the chat thing. Okay, please. Thank you. All the three of them are coming from Jordan. Okay, good. So the first one, I, I guess two of them are in, uh, in regards to the Sidur thing. Okay. Uh, yeah, so the first one is. Uh, uh, Jordan says, I have an Ashkenazi door as well, and it says not to put the head on the hand uh, during Tachanun unless you're in the presence of a separate Torah. Uh, if one is playing alone, uh, I mean, I guess he, he meant praying. If one is praying alone, do you think it would be wiser to omit uh, Tachanun entirely? Okay, I apologize. Okay, so. Uh, he he's one hundred percent right. I I I have been praying with the minion for a long time, so that's why I completely forgot. Yes, when uh, when person uh, prays individually, they do not uh, say uh, they they say everything of the tachanun they do say, but they do not put the head down unless they uh, pray in a uh, in a place where it's a safer Torah. So uh, the 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 first the, the the more the most optimal way to pray is in a, in a in a synagogue with the minion. The second optimal way to pray is in a synagogue without the minion. For example, a person came later, he started uh, earlier. So we, we have a few people like that in my show. I have to like uh, commute and uh, very far, so they stop. I mean, not not recently, but but some some time ago. I'm not sure. Maybe the schedule changed. I don't know what's the story. But they would start maybe 40 minutes before everybody comes, and they would uh, like in the middle of our prayer they would leave because they would have to go. So it would be proper. Of course, did they pray with the minion? No, they did not pray with the minion. You understand? But they still they prayed in a synagogue. So a person prays in a synagogue where the safer Torah. Yes, he would put his hand uh, head down. Okay, that's uh, that's good uh, good question. But if a person prays in home or a, on a synagogue on a, on a room when there is no uh, a safer Torah, there is like a jazz in the room, so you you don't put your head down. Very good question. Yes, but but text we do say. What else? Thank you, Rabbi. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, the second question he says also to the Rav, could you elaborate? a little bit more on the section that one can die during like which part of the tefillah is the life uh, of the tefillah the life raised is the highest it's uh when when we put the, the head down so that's uh when when Siddur says uh, the, the head down it's like uh two uh two paragraphs that's uh that's the thing or three paragraphs yeah so that's uh that's uh, as i said ashkenazi said the wrong ones but Sephardi so send the right ones, but they, they put uh, do not put the head down. So that's uh, I mean that's in the Gemara. They they have the whole uh, story when uh, the, this rabbi hated somebody else and he prayed this prayer and guess what uh, somebody died, right? Because like of course he did not intend it, but it was in his heart, if I remember correctly, right? And the second uh, second person also died so he i think if i remember correct maybe i'm mixing up the story his wife understood what's going on so she said stop it you cannot do that though you're not allowed to pray this uh, this <laughs> this style you understand because you're killing people with uh, with like holiness with intention and unfortunately like uh, as, as we sp spoke yesterday about hasid and sadiq like everything like reverted in this uh, crooked uh, society, and same with the uh, Tachanon, and uh, it like, kills me, like, I don't know, it creeps my heart when people like making joke, oh, today there is no Tachanon, and they make joke, oh, it's a, such a day there is no Tachanon. It's like, uh, the power of Tachanon is so, so uh, the holiness of Tachanon is uh, very, very great. 
You understand? So when, uh, of course, uh, uh, maybe your your prayer is a little shorter. So just just keep quiet. Just keep quiet. You don't say this. You, you can always say. You can always compensate. So you um, you save three minutes, four minutes. So there are many things uh, that uh, after that after no, normal shacharis, and we can get over over this. I, th I think we did in one class. But uh, somebody asked you yesterday all of the additions for Parnassa, for children, for Parashat Aman, six uh, things that, that we have to remember every day, for Sephardim it's ten things. I mean, uh, all of these, uh, the Ten Commandments, uh, like, <laughs> just just because there is now Taha Nun, so it does not make, uh, like, don't, don't make a big fun, unfortunately. But people, because of the ignorance, then, you know, like, uh, there is a joke, there is no Taha Nun, so it's like a blessed day. So opposite is true. I mean, it's a holiday, of course, but uh, don't don't make such uh, jokes. Understand? And if you have this, uh, you say it's uh, extra minutes. Use them for something that uh, you you never had to have time to to say. Right? That uh, would be wise uh, move. Okay. What else? Yeah, why? Well, I have a question in regards to this issue of uh, libraries during, during prayer. Uh, so, what about the ketovet? Uh, because uh, Binatan says that if one omits one of the ingredients, yes. uh, he will be held accountable of the death penalty. Yes. So, uh, is this as dangerous, just as dangerous as well, if we kind of miss one of the ingredients? Yes, yes. And uh, for, first of all, to, uh, it's absolutely forbidden to, to make it for a personal use. Right? So, um, if, if somebody is in training, right, it would be allowed, but uh, another supervision so that he would not smell and use it for his personal use and this clitoris it says a person who says this uh this uh, piece about clitoris so he's that whole they would be blessed or would uh, go, go well okay i mean uh, somebody who is in uh, in what is it in all of this uh, uh bl bl blessing who, who's looking for um Maz, a lot, so that that's what they do. But I mean, uh, I I say it because it's a part of the prayers, not because I'm going to get this reward or get because it's my seder. So and some people just skip, like blindly they skip. And as I said, in most shuls they they give three minutes to all these things. Three minutes takes me to, thirty minutes, twenty five taps when when unfortunately I'm uh, too tired and then or uh, I don't pay any attention, so it's twenty five minutes. Otherwise, it's thirty minutes. All these all of these uh, things without extra kalana, without whatever, just read read the words with uh, like simple understanding. Period. No, no, no deep understanding. Simple understanding. So they, they do it in three minutes. Okay. Can you go? What else? Any other questions? Sure, probably. No. Um, uh, he has another question that says uh, another question called Arav. When we open the fridge door on Yom Tov or Shabbos and the cold air diffuse when we open the door this is very interesting causing the fridge consume more electricity to maintain the temperature that's, uh, doesn't that count as using fire? Okay um, I think we, we, we're going to learn this book I think did the cover not okay so I, I give you a brief uh, brief uh, answer. So I'm, I'm not going to go to all of the opinions, but uh, a brief, brief, brief. So there is um, there. If, uh, okay, if if uh, there is a light, light is on. If you, somebody did not disconnect the light, it's forbidden to open the door. So and uh, if in our uh, refrigerator we have a light in the freezer, like separate light. So we, we just cover it. It's can constantly like locked, so it ne never goes on. We, we we got so used to it, we never use this light anyway, right? So if it's a light is on, so you're not allowed to open the door. First of all, second of all, there are three like a uh, few few opinions. Uh, one say that if if the motor is running, the compressor is running, so you open the door. So it's not it's not uh, even though it's going to run more because you opening the door, but it's not so it's not direct. Okay, so it's, it's not direct, there is an in, indirect uh, cause, no problem. So other, others say, yeah, the opposite is true. So when uh, when the thing is not running, right, so you open the door, 
So when it's not running, maybe it's going to start running a little earlier, not maybe for sure, but it's again, it's not, uh, it's not direct. Right, then uh, others say, no, it's up, uh, actually when, when the motor is running and you open, so it, it was running, even it's going to go, I mean, I don't know when it's going to shut off, maybe now, maybe uh, two, two minutes later, I have no idea. It was running when it opened, so, so three opinions, of course, everybody have uh, uh, the, the, the own rationale, but uh, the bottom line, we go by opinion that you, you open the door when, uh, when you need to open. But if you want to go, go according to all of the opinions, so you, go, you open the door uh, indirectly. So one, 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 some people say with, a, with your foot, like from, from the bottom, and some people say, yeah, you just put the towel on, uh, on the refrigerator handle and that's how you open the door. But if, if you don't want, just open the door normally, there is no problem whatsoever. Intake uh, is the cold air is uh, I mean the, if the warm air is going to go in of course that's uh, but it's not your intention your intention is to take food so and um, just and to, to 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 preserve the food when you put it back you have no no interest uh, in hot, hot air going inside cold air like warm up that's not your business so that's that's why it's it's no for no consequence there is no problem. Uh, you understand? So intention of the Jews is very, very powerful, very, very powerful. You understand? So that's uh, that's our intention. Again, I want the food. I don't, I don't care about air, and I would like uh, the this refrigerator actually never work. I mean, uh, work, but uh, do not consume electricity. So I pay less of electric bill, and uh, it's it's very unfortunate for, for me that uh, the hot uh, hot air goes in. That's that's our intention. That's it. So you're allowed to open. So it's it's summary. Of course, uh, we can discuss it. it. We learn it in different class in all the details. Yeah, go ahead. What else? Thank you, Rabbi. Um, yeah, I, I think Jose has questions. Sorry. Okay. Thank you, Benny. Uh, Rabbi, I have a I have a question. Actually, this this is something that happened to somebody that I know. That uh, he was moving, uh, he was moving, uh, he was moving to another apartment, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, one of the things that he told me he was going to run into is that for going down the stairs on Shabbat, and they had sensor lights, right? And you could you can't take them off; it's part of the building. So, what do you what does what does somebody do in that case when it's not their intention to walk? Like when he's walking down the stairs. And it's like, what do they do? So I, I had a similar question from, from somebody just uh, months ago um, about uh, that they have uh, they moved to a new apartment. It is the building, and the, there is a code, like uh, like an electronic code. So even though the, the the buttons are like uh, mechanical, but guess what? <laughs> when you uh, open the, the, the they put the code, the the, the, the whole panel the highlights. And it makes sound, so it's absolutely forbidden. And that person said, okay, I just want to go out, like on Shabbos morning. And it was a problem. So I said, you, you cannot go out. Because uh, like when you open the door, the light is going on for sure. Like, of course, it's not your intention. So the, the thing is, was uh, to wait for uh, somebody. I said, ask. Uh, so he did not. I mean, uh, if you like, uh, if you think practically, you would come to, to the same uh, conclusion. I said, find somebody, like get acquainted with somebody who has a dog that they walk, some non-Jew, and ask them, what, what time you walk your dog? So a person usually, people usually walk the dogs in the same time, like 7.30, when I was 7, when I was 6, when I was the time. So, uh, so you, you, you make sure that you're there, ready for this guy to go out with his dog, and you go with this guy out, that's it. You understand? Same with the slides, that, that, that's a problem. Of course, it's not your intention to for the lights uh, go on, but uh, for sure they're going to go on. So that's uh, we try to avoid it as much as possible. So I would say try to to the solution, right? Uh, meaning uh, to go behind somebody else, piggyback, okay, piggyback, or try to maybe there, there, there's another answer. I, uh, 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 exit. Maybe there is other through the basement or something. There is always like uh, not always, but 
many times. So, but uh, tell her the truth a few times. Went uh, to a hotel a long time ago. Of course, not Jewish hotel. They never saw the Jews in their life, maybe. But uh, it was only one staircase, and that's it. And uh, nobody except us looks like uh, used the staircase from, from the beginning of the time. And it's always, always with, uh, with this uh, sense of light. And so we would ask uh, this uh, lady from uh, uh, from a help desk, right, to, to walk with us, and she would walk with us. She's first, my wife, second time, and behind, of course. You understand? So, so it's, uh, the, the sensor would be turned on because of her, right? And I'm not sure for how many seconds, but I told my wife we try to uh, keep close to her as much as as, uh, as possible, so the, the sensor would not stay longer because of us. Okay, but uh, basically you you do your best. Okay, so what else? And same 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 actually yeah just one same 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 on a on the streets when when you when you pass it, when you go like uh, in, in this row of uh, private houses they they have uh, many of them have this this uh, sensor light so if you know there is sensor light. And of course, it's not your intention. So you try to go around, avoid it. But uh, if, uh, for example, you need to step on on a road and it's dangerous, of course you're not uh, you're not going to you're not obligated to risk your life because of that. Or you have a baby carriage or something. Well, let's say there is uh, what is it? there is a uh, airof and you allow to to carry your baby. So of course you're not going to go to to this on on the street. But we try to avoid it as much as possible. Why? Because uh, even if it is indirect, but uh, it's because of you. Okay, go ahead. Next question, please. Thank you, Rabbi. I have the same problem in my building, uh, and the sensor is right, right, uh, right beside my my doorstep. Uh, so yeah, this club. I was I was thinking uh, once about uh, sending my dogs, but I believe it's forbidden to send an animal to perform a melacha, isn't it? Mm. It's, it's not. It's, it's not. It's not direct melacha. It's not. So if you if you want, uh, for example, the, the classic case that uh, you you're going to to somewhere to to your shul and you want to put your talus on your donkey or something. So they, they, it's uh, for sure it's canon, but this way well, the dogs went uh, ran this way, that way, so it's not it's not exactly melacha. So it, it would be preferable actually to do this way if possible. So would it be okay if I open the door and the dogs start like running yeah. downstairs and they yeah. turn on the lights? Yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah. 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 They. It's not. Uh, it's actually we learned today. I have this uh, Igles Moshe class, like 10, 10 minutes a day. And um, the question was asked uh, whether a, a person be, um, uh, uh, before before the Bar Mitzvah or Babas Mitzvah, whether they're not, uh, uh, we don't punish them or they're not liable at all. That there's no, no problem what, whatsoever if they do something wrong. So and uh, the, the case, uh, the, one of the examples was brought. Of course, it's I, I would not remember the whole the whole discussion. It was uh, we've been doing it for a long time. But uh, one one of the case was uh, uh, like proofs were, was brought from from Gemara. It says a person was um, um, close to the to, to the town. I think it was the Ben Ben Hashimashos, meaning that's twilight period, and he had uh, the belt um, money belt. They call of course, they, they use like uh, coin money. They put it in the belt uh, on their body, and uh, you, you're not allowed to, to carry, of course, this mukta. Not allowed to carry it on Shabbos. So they say uh, several solutions. Um, a first solution: uh, give it to a non-Jew. It would be the best one, right? Uh, so you would ask him in a period when it's allowed to ask. Ben Hashemashos. Of course, he's going to carry it during. Uh, uh, during the Shabbos, but what can you do? You, you don't have any option. Um, second was um, to put it, as we said today, on your animal. Let uh, your donkey or your horse 
can you carry this money belt and the third one if uh, you, none of them is available so you can give it to a child build below the bar mitzvah right so so many of the, the children are not uh, animals and children they're not responsible so we don't hold them liable for, for these things so of course if you if uh, if, the, if it's a choice between a person and the animals, so of course, and the animal, of course, uh, uh, they do not do anything. So in the, in, the, in the, our case, it was allowed. I understand it's exception because of the money. Our sages did exception because they say if we don't allow the person, like to carry in some or some indirect way, so he 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 is going to carry himself. He is going to be hal shams. Sages understood right? attachment uh, person to the money, to the money. Right, but uh, despite all that, so they, they say, yeah, you can put it an animal, but uh, they even like animal would be allowed to carry in these circumstances. But uh, when dogs uh, run, run back and forth, like uh, in a, in a, in the lobby, in a, not like in a staircase, there is no problem whatsoever. They just playing. They do whatever dogs do. They don't like carry for you anything. So that's good. Yes. What else? Thank you, Rabbi. You're welcome. What else? Uh, I have another question about uh, walking our dogs on Shabbos. Um, so what happens when, when we have to be, pick up the... the that's uh, that's the problem. That's uh, that's the big problem because we're not allowed to carry. So if uh, there is no Eruv, we're not allowed to carry. But even if there is an Eruv, this uh, thing is a Mukta. Understand something? Uh, there is no so the, the definition of the muksa definition, of the, and plus it's a nolat something that came came uh, to the existence on Shabbos. So it's many many issues with this uh, this walking of the dogs, right? Uh, um, so what what does it mean that um, first the thing did not exist before Shabbos, right? So it is uh, no light, we're not allowed to touch. So the, the classic example that we always uh, give uh, a chicken's egg, right? So it was not, we, we opened it, we gave food for, uh, to chickens, let's say Friday afternoon, right? And there, there was no eggs, right? So maybe it came out on uh, fr Friday night. I'm, I'm not sure when the chicken lay the eggs, but let's say theoretically, right? Right, or it, it came out on, on Shabbos, maybe like maybe before Shabbos, maybe after Shabbos started. So that's why the, the egg is a muksa and we're not allowed to touch it. That's a classic case, right? So, so from, from, from here, we, we can learn uh, these things. This tool is, uh, of course, it was not there on Shabbos. You, you work them on, uh, I mean, when Shabbos started, Shabbos morning, and uh, and uh, the another, so it's no lot, I'm sorry, no. it's no lot, something that was created on Shabbos. Molit. And uh, the second thing is uh, Muktza is something that, is, that has no practical uh, usage for, for Shabbos. So, for example, your phone, right, or your computer, or your uh, battery, right, uh, have no um, money, right, so they, they have no practical usage on Shabbos, so they, uh, that's why they are forbidden to be carried. So, there is, these dogs are uh, not few issues. And plus, uh, if there is no Eruv to carry the, the leash. So they say, uh, one more practical example, I mean, to, to try to minimize things, right, of course. So the one practical example would be to carry, uh, to, to let the leash drag on the, on the floor, right? Because if you, you're not allowed to carry, right? So if it drags on the floor, so it means that dogs carry it. Okay, you maybe you're holding it, but dogs carry it. The, the the site so that's uh, one of the like, uh, like uh, things that minimize the the issue okay well you, yeah you're welcome so it's not it's not such a simple thing so if we, if we can train the dog uh, to go in the, in, the, in the bathroom in a house like special dog toilets it would be the best but otherwise um, what can we do Okay, what else? Thank you, Robert. You're welcome. So what about, because my, my dogs are very, I mean, two of the three are very obedient, and they would walk uh, beside me, uh, even without me telling them what to do, like giving them orders or anything, but uh, I don't know 
if it would be problematic to let them do their thing, uh, the thing uh, in, the, in the park that is close by my apartment without picking it up and then coming that's afterwards. A, that's the problem. I mean, it could be Hil Hashem. Um, you understand? That's, uh, that's an even bigger issue. So if uh, other people see it, like, uh, like uh, we saw uh, on the, the, this Shabbos, guess what? It was uh, this Shabbos when uh, the, this lady had uh, he picked up uh, the, after he had dogs and um, we have a garbage cans, I mean, from, from my complex, right? And we, we had it outside, so it's my responsibility to put them back. Okay, so our garbage pickup is on, uh, on Shabbos. Um, no, of course, I, I don't pick up. I mean, if somebody else wants, I mean, uh, no, nobody is going to stop him. But I, I, I'm not going to tell anybody what, what to do. I don't want to give them instructions what to do for us for Shabbos. Okay, so it's my responsibility. So I will leave it uh, over on, on a, on a, on a, on a, on a, on a uh, curb, right? Until uh, Motsi Shabbos, Shabbos finished. So I put them back, no problem. But sometimes these people who picked up the dogs, they put like uh, these bags into our garbage. Some, sometimes like they put in their own can, but it's supposed to be like uh, for a recycle and they put this bag, so we have to take it out. So it's not the pleasant experience. And guess what? I, I see, I see, I, I, I have, uh, I have the, the guests that live in my house. Right, and uh, the, this lady, and uh, I'm standing on uh, like a third floor, second floor, on the second floor. She, she does not see me, right? I see it like on, on, on the porch, so I, uh, my, my guests are, are downstairs. So, and, uh, and she is working with this bag, and she, she wants to, to throw in our garbage can. You understand? So, of course, I stop her, but, uh, but uh, it would be like uh, if she was, would be, I think she's Jewish, but uh, not religious. Maybe yes, maybe not, but it would be big hill Hashem doing that, or do not pick up, and somebody would step into. It's uh, it's better to pick up because uh, because of uh, hill Hashem. Understand? So and plus, uh, you're not allowed to to tie the the, the knot. Got completely. You're not allowed to, to tie the knot only only one one time. Or get something that is uh, some kind of uh, trick or something that uh, would not untie. Some like a paper clip or something. Of course, you, 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 you've been caring. So I have uh, here, very interesting. <laughs> so when I say paper clip, I mean something like that. Over here, one second. Let's go. So something like, like that that you can open. And close back, so they, it's, it's not con considered to be time. Okay. Yeah, yeah you're welcome. What else? Yeah, yeah but with you, there was a lot of prohibition, prohibitions uh, around. This yes, area. yeah. So that that's uh, yeah, uh, China not to have these pets. Uh, so I have a couple questions about uh, the brick system fire and young dog, but I believe mm -hmm. someone else has more questions. I don't know. If Okay, so let's see. Anybody else uh, have questions? Yeah, go ahead. Rabbi? Yes, go ahead. So, um, I just want to ask this for the uh, Rosh Hashanah. One of the things that I, well, one of the things I've been noticing in the community lately, I don't know if this is, I think this is unfortunately normal in most communities. Um, but there was, uh, I remember we ate in bread and we made the blessing. I didn't. I don't know if the person next to me made the. Uh, uh, he washed his hands or anything. I don't know. Uh, but I know when he finished, I just saw him get up and he was about to leave. I was like, oh, I don't know. But I told him, hey, before you leave, because he said he was gonna go home. I was like, wait, wait before you leave, you uh, you gotta do uh, the katan mm -hmm. And to my surprise, they looked. He's like, oh, what is that? And I was like, what, what do you mean? You don't know what is that? Mm -hmm. uh, I was kind of shocked. I was like, let me get you a seat or. Mm -hmm. And he reads Hebrew. I was like, I was a little shocked. I was like, oh, I was, like, I was a little shocked. And I was like, how come nobody's telling him that, you know, he's supposed to do an after blessing? So I got him the scissor and I told him, look, here, here, you're going to open to this page and just, you know, read this. And you have to include the Rosh Hashanah blessing, mm -hmm. uh, Shabbat mm -hmm. blessing. Mm -hmm. And there was people there. That, uh, 
I don't know why any, nobody didn't tell him anything. So no, he was shocked. He was like, oh, I didn't know I had to do this. And uh, I just want to ask if what I did was, uh, he was a super sweet gentleman. Uh, what I did, was it proper? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah, know it's, proper. it was absolutely and, proper, yeah. So especially, as you said, uh, he did not know. He did know or did not know, or maybe, maybe he was uh, pretending. Maybe he was embarrassed, maybe. Uh, that's another possibility. That uh, said that he did not know about the Hassan Amazon, and now he acts surprised. Maybe yes, maybe no, but you, you did the right thing. So next time before leave, he would say the Hassan Amazon. You know, you understand? So that's uh, that's the problem. So we're not allowed, uh, like, uh, to to give food. It says clear in Shochan, you're not allowed to give a food to a person who is not going to say the blessing before or after. Period. Very simple. So of course, if person is poor, he's starving, and maybe he's and maybe he's going to say the blessing. Maybe he's not going to say the blessing. It's questionable. That's a different thing. Okay, so we're allowed to kill him, but if you know for sure he does not going to say the blessing, or he does not know the blessing, or maybe he would say if you put in give him a scissors, so that's a different story. So it's it's not such a simple thing. So these people who invite just anybody because so this guy is not poor. It's not like he's starving. He would go home and uh, he has a five-star meal, you know, in a sense. So it's not, uh, so to a person like that, who does not say blessing, you're not allowed to feed. And Rabbi, also, um, one of the things that uh, there was somebody there, and it kind of, uh, it, it, it bothered me a little bit. I actually responded to him in a way that it, he didn't take it offensive, and in a way that I wanted him to answer himself. It would... He got to the topic where he was talking about children, how you should be all, uh, in his words, hesitant, all hesitant to his children. And I was like, wait, what do you mean all hesitant? What happens if your child is a very, very you know, rebellious child? Because, uh, you know, growing up, I come from a family that's, a, you know, Hispanic household and we we're strong. And, you know, like I've seen, like, one thing that we respected our parents, we feared our parents. So I did something wrong. I was like, oh, I was like, you know, uh, I'm a, like I'm gonna get spanked or something. Like mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. this is not my friend. Like my mom and my father, they're not my friends. They're like my parents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this this person is like, oh no, like you don't want your kids growing up with trauma. And I was like, what do you mean trauma? I was like, the best things that I've learned from is me learning from like the fear of my parents. Like that's why I'm like that's why. Mm -hmm. Respect them, and I and I love them. And I was just asking, and I asked him a question. And I said, wait. What do you do in the case of a reddish child? What, what do you do there? He's like, oh, you have to apply a little bit of guru. I was like, okay, there you go. You answered your own question. Because he was one of these people that says, uh, he, one of the things he said that bothered me, he's like, oh, uh, Hashem loves the wicked and the righteous the same. I was like, that blew my mind. I had to walk up and leave. I was like, wait, I can't believe I just heard that. Because I was like, that does not, that's not what the Torah says. Right? And it says in our prayers. So it's like, we, 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 say, we say it in, uh, in, in Shema. So if you're going to walk my way, I'm going to reward you. If you're going against me, I'm going to punish you. Shema. We say it three times a day. You understand? So that's uh, when people say, in what language should I pray? I say in a language that you understand. So if you know Hebrew, like uh, you know how to pronounce, and you have uh, like uh, vaguely know the, the meaning. So don't say it. Like say it uh, like... And maybe every other time. So I'll say in your own language that you understand what you're saying. It says clearly, reward and punishment, and every time you say in Shema. But what you said, it's actually Shlomo Hanalak said that a person who did not broke a stick on his child, I mean, he hates his child. Right? Meaning that you have to reprove your child, you have to educate and spank him if needed. Do, do whatever you need. If you always like, uh, and we have this. Uh, these people, unfortunately, these people, they suffering so much. These uh, grown-up men and women, so they come to me and they cry because of these children that they, they spoiled, and now they just demand and they do not understand why, why parents do not provide. Why? Okay, he's only thirty years old, thirty-five years old. Why? Why mother cannot send him a check every time? What, what is the problem with you? And that's all came from uh, from this. Uh, from this uh, lovey dovey uh, bringing. So it's actually that damaged the children. And they uh, like uh, they, they now they have trauma.
because after they uh, they separate from these parents, they do not understand why uh, why the whole world does not treat them as their mother did or father. And so for them it's a big trauma, and now they angry with their, their parents even more. So what else? Thank you, Evan. You're welcome. It's a good question. I mean, uh, people do not learn Torah, and then they have their own opinion. Okay. What else? Anybody? Yeah. Go ahead, Israel. Uh -huh. I have one. If I made, did I make ad val? Uh, did I make ad uh, habdala correctly by only separating between holy and sacred, but nothing else? Habdala on the, yes, on the, on the, the second day of Rosh Hashanah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So the, um, it's it's very practical questions. I apologize. I forgot to cover it. I mean, Yes, uh, be, before the Yom Tov. Or did they cover? No, I think I, we did cover. We did cover. So the Havdala, no, I think we did cover. Um, Havdala is made, to, uh, we said, on two candles. And since we're not uh, allowed to extinguish, so to light the, the fire we can, but to extinguish we're not allowed. So you put them in uh, the handle holders. Candle holders. Uh, so Havdala we make only like in in the text of our um, in the text of our kiddush for the next day you did you have dala you make the blessing on the uh, on the candles but no blessing on the spices because uh, spices means what that uh, our extra neshama that came only on shabbos only so it leaves right uh, motzi shabbos that's that's why you need uh, um, this uh, smell right but uh, since it, shabbos goes into yontov. So the shower stays, Baruch Hashem, so we, we don't need to, to do anything. So, I mean, no no spices. But at the end of the holiday, we do a Havdalah on wine only, or, a, or a grape juice, or beer, or whatever, a different beverage, as we discussed before. Um, and you say only the last paragraph of the Havdalah prayer, which is, uh, you say, uh, I mean, the, the whole paragraph, right? That uh, separated uh, the holy from mundane, seven days from seventh day from the six working days, and so on. Right, so like you have you 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 do have dala breaking broken in parts on lights because the only way they um, the only way you can uh, do a blessing on the lights only on Motzi Shabbos. I mean until uh, some some say until the the sunrise of, of the of the Sunday. Okay, the, the whole night you have uh, this time to, to, to make the blessing. I'm, I'm, I'm talking in general, you know, in the regular days, even uh, regular weeks. And uh, the second part of, uh, of, uh, of Havdala we do on, at the end of the holiday. And, and all, of the, all of the holidays, at the end of the holidays, we do Havdala only on wine. Okay. Um, so, but... How, how do you extinguish the fire and stick on the You don't. No, no, no. What's that? No, 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 you're not allowed. That's what I say. You, you, usually we, uh, we make Havdala on, on a candle with, uh, with many weeks, like uh, seven, eight, ten days, whatever. But, uh, but you, you need to extinguish it. So that's why when, when on a regular, like on, when there is a Shabbos and goes into Yonto, you took two candles. You cross uh, the, the the fire. When you finish Havdala, you just put them down. Let them burn t t till the end. That's uh, that's uh, the way. You're not allowed to extinguish. So it was uh, and the day was Sunday. So no, no, no. It, it was Sunday. No, let's say it. It was Sunday, but it was Sunday holiday. That's this. Uh, separate it in holy and secular are you allowed or not allowed to to uh, turn off the fires no 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 you you don't separate so when when the second day is a sunday of like from shabbos you go to the to the second day which is a sunday right so that's uh you there is no mundane this uh this uh second day of holiday is not mundane it's also also holy you understand so the two two holy days basically 
So I, I think in 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 a, in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a in a what is it in a sidur it says who separated the holy from holy. There is one holiness of Shabbos and the holiness of Yom Tov, two separate holiness. Uh, yeah, that that is the uh, Saturday Saturday um, sunset, but I, I am I am referring to uh, Sunday. Uh, Evening when there is okay. already uh, weekday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. Okay, got it, got it. So Saturday evening, you you, you say blessing on the on the on the one on one. As we said, that's it. Last paragraph of the um, of the Habdal and the blessing on the one. That's it. So, are, but are you allowed to to turn off the fire? You must leave to extinguish it. Uh, no, you you allowed you allowed. Okay, so okay, so step back. So when uh, when the holiday is over, or when Shabbos is over, but you did not do Havdalah yet, so you you say bless is uh, the one who separated man, um, holy from mundane. Baruch Hamavdul ben Kodesh lechol, right? And the, the, that's enough phrase without Hashem's name. We don't say Hashem's name at this point. So that's enough for you to do all the activities what you need. Like when when uh, time wise, right? Time wise, so your Shabbos is over. Time wise, the Shabbos is over, but I want to do Habdal uh, one hour later, 40 minutes or 15 minutes later. It doesn't matter, right? So I, I want to do some preparation. I want to shut off the, uh, the, my, my stove. My, I want to turn my light, uh, turn off my light, do all of these things. So there is no problem. So you're, you're allowed, after saying this phrase, you're allowed to do everything except eating. Eating, you're not allowed. Eating and drinking, you're not allowed. So and then you say the blessing on... Uh, um, over the wine, in this case in uh, secondary of Yom Tov, and you're allowed to, to eat and drink. I, I have that doubt because there is no... I associate uh, extinguishing the fire with the blessing of Bore Aesh, but in, in that second day ending of, of the holiday, there mm -hmm. is no yeah, exactly, exactly, uh, exactly, uh, exactly, yeah. Fire. exactly, yeah. So I didn't know how to do with the with the fire. And the, there is a, there is no fire. You just turn on the the light and that's it. So you, you light uh, so you can see how 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 to read and that's it. There is no fire. Fire is only uh, uh, um, connected to Shabbos. We say blessing over the fire of the scandal because. Uh, the fire, the fire as a fire was created and Hashem gave this uh, idea to Adam to to rub two stones and make a uh, spark and uh, do, do the fire. So that's when he, he made this blessing on the fire. On a Friday, oh, on Shabbos night, not in any other days. I have another question about this other topic. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I, I always, uh, I, not recently, I started to ask myself to wonder why uh, Allahic Jews are not making uh, Aliyah to Israel. What, what are they waiting? There is no such a requirement to, to do Aliyah to Israel until Mashiach comes. Uh, uh, because I related this because uh, of the prophecy of Ezekiel that says when all the Jews are in Israel, then only Mashiach will come. No, I was not, understanding no, no, that. No, true, no. But I am not an expert on this. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, it's one one of the things that uh, Mashiach is going to do. He is going to bring everybody to to Israel. As as of right now, because of the government, even if person uh, lives in Israel, it's still considered it's like he lives in exile. Because we're not in uh, in control of the land, so lefty liberals. So. All right. Uh, okay, I understand that a little bit more. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. What else? Okay. Yes. Okay. You have an IP. I said that I was gonna make a question in regards to the to the pre-existing fire on Yom Tov, and it was exactly the same question that Israel makes of Baruch Hashem. Okay. Because I didn't know what to do with the with mm -hmm. the Havdalah candles, yes. with the braided ones. Okay. Yeah, Baruch Hashem. Sure. So can I make a question? Yes. Uh, topic. 
Okay, go ahead. So, uh, uh, this is in regards to rebuke, and let's say if the person knows that he has to rebuke someone and he doesn't like to rebuke, but generally speaking, he's not a person that, that likes rebuking, mm -hmm. but yet he does it, like he does it regardless when he has to. Is this like a sign that his rebuke is coming from a, from a good place? I think so. I mean, it's, uh, when somebody likes to rebuke, that is the problem with the, with the person. You know, so he, he likes to be boss. He likes to tell everybody what to do. And he, he likes to point out uh, the deficiency of other people. So it, for sure it's not coming from, uh, from a good source. Right? So if, uh, if a person, that's, uh, that's what he likes. So, but uh, we, like it seems it is halacha to rebuke somebody. It's one of the 613 mitzvahs. So that's, uh, that's what we do, whether we like it or not. You understand? So we're not doing it because we want to humiliate this person to tell him something that, that he's dying doing or she's doing wrong, but because uh, there is halacha, we're trying to help them. Right? But uh, it's uh, all of this conversation, of course, not, not all of them, but many very un uncomfortable. So and, uh, you, you prefer not to have them. You understand? But uh, so you're still doing it. You're welcome. So, Jordan, I think Jordan made another question on the chat thing. Okay, what else? Let's go off. Are you allowed to give to give food to non-idol worshiper Goyim that will say he correct Rahot? For example, if you're eating and an observant Muslim comes and wants to say Bismillah to Hashem as he believes it is necessary in Islam and eat the meal with you, uh, in the workplace, what should be done? Cool. I, I didn't get it. So, are, are you allowed to give in a, a food to a non Jew if he's going to say the blessing in uh, according to his religion? Right? That's uh, that's the question, and he's a servant or something. So, yeah, if he's not idol worshiper, so you uh, we can give them. Food. I mean, uh, it's, it should not be our mission in life to give them food because there are so many Jews that are uh, starving. But if, if uh, to, for a peace, uh, to, to, to promote the peace, yeah, you're allowed to, to give the food. They're going to say the blessing, whatever the blessing that they say, it basically is good. So if it, that it does not pertain to the idol, so this Muslim, if he says to, uh, to Hashem a blessing, okay, well, let them say the... the um, the, the blessing. So I think they're not obligated. I'm not 100% sure, but I think they're not obligated to say the blessings. But if they do, that's uh, that's amazing. So basically, the bottom line, yes, you're allowed to give them, especially if they're not out of worship. And if you can, uh, like from promotion of peace, you work together. But otherwise, like uh, trying to... As, as we saw in the movie, right? Uh, um, tell me who your friends are. Tell you who you are, or I don't know what is the name. Just that we released just recently. So that's uh, that's exactly the thing. We're trying to separate from all of these people because they are going to the food is kosher. This is kosher, but they are going to say whatever they know about this uh, uh, foolish belief that they have. You understand, or like, or a secular person. Maybe he's the sweetest person, but he's going to tell you whatever he knows about the movies, about this, about that. Okay, you understand. So, if it's possible to avoid it, so avoid it. May make yourself busy at work. So I cannot. Sorry, I cannot take take a break. So you you go eat, you enjoy, but uh, maybe I'll, I'm going to eat later. That's it. So that's uh, well, what I did in my office. So I mean, in our, in our office, there was no like standard break time, like from from twelve to to one, let, 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 let's say, or from twelve to twelve. To there was not like people work without breaks, even though breaks were allowed, but nobody took break. And I would I would go pray. So that's uh, my break was would be my, my milcha and my learning time. So I would uh, use my break uh, for for that. 
and then I would eat uh, while working, so there is no problem. But other people, they would uh, like so socialize, they'd go, go to cafeteria, there are many, many tables, people sit around the tables and socialize, there is, was TV in there, so they watch TV and stuff like that. So I never ever sat in with them, never went out with them, even though when somebody was going out or get promotion, he would uh, treat everybody in you know, this restaurant, that restaurant. They say, no, they, they're going to uh, order you kosher food. I said, I'm, I'm very busy and may, make yourself, may pretend that I uh, work very hard on that day. And then yeah, I would, uh, like like you said, the sensors. So sensors would, would be like, uh, so nobody would see it. I would slip uh, through the back door. That's it. So, I mean, uh, did they know? Maybe they did, but I, I do not care. Don't, don't sit with them. Don't uh, have anything to them with them. Okay, but of course be nice and uh, just uh, because of the work. So everybody understand the work. So yeah, workload everybody understands. So that's it. Stay holy and separate. Holiness means separation. Thank you, Rabbi. Okay. So regards to this question is. Uh... Would it be problematic if, let's say, we make a blessing over food? Let's say we're, we're, we're more people with co workers or anything, and some of them are idol worshippers, and we say a blessing. Is it problematic if one of them says Amen after we say the blessing? There is a, no, there is a, there is no problem. I mean, they, they can send Amen. There is no problem. But the, the, the problem is, uh, for example, if uh, this idol worshipper is now going to, oh, the, I also know how, how to, 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 to say the blessing. And he was uh, would uh, bless Yoshke. You understand? So you, you put them, and it says that in uh, Shochanor, you're not allowed to start the partnership with idol worshiper. Why? Well, not because they dishonest people. But why? It could come to a time that there is a dispute, right? And he said, he's well, I look, I swear, I did not take. I don't know what what happened. I swear to you. I swear in the name of Yoshke that that uh, that's what what it was. And you. Mr. Jew promote uh, like uh, like uh, prompted him right uh, uh, to to say uh, to to say the blessing in the name of uh, his idol because of you. You understand? So they say that not not to put yourself in that situation. If possible, don't enter into partnership. Yes, go ahead. I watched the movie, oh, amazing movie. I watched it twice actually while I was driving the car just to yeah. really see what it said. One of the things that really uh, was really interesting is where it says with the uh, with the person that averts his eyes, the person that's for a long time he's in an environment where he's uh, you know keeping his eyes in check, but gets to the point where it's so difficult because there's so much kedusha that the sitra has after him. So when should the person leave because since he's, his kedusha is growing because he's you know uh, protecting his eyes? When is the right moment for him to to leave the place he's at? Right away, as soon as soon as possible. You're not allowed to enter this place. You understand? So it's it's, uh, it's only a matter of time when the person is going to fail. So, but if uh, the, you you're in different environment, there is no such challenges. So you have a, you have a good chance to to survive. Otherwise, it's not. Oh, thank you very much. You're welcome. And it just, just it's very interesting. Whatever it says in the movie, if you notice, we said everything in different wording. Exactly, we said in these classes. Some people were shocked, but uh, as you see, it's uh, it's nothing uh, that I made up or something. So if you have to separate from these people, and even though it's painful, and you love them and you want to help them, but uh, they, they don't want to be helped. They won't want to save you. They want to, to see you as a normal, right, as them. Okay, they consider to be themselves normal, and you a little abnormal, but uh, you can uh, find the common ground. So this common ground is not good for you. You understand? So that's, uh, that's the thing. So sometimes you have to run away as far as possible or create yourself an island, right? You're there, but you don't talk to, you don't have any communication. So I'm busy. When you're going to be free, I'm going to call you. 
What are you going to call them? Never. Of course, you, you, you're not saying never, but uh, as I said many times, they're going to leave you alone. Like, how many times they're going to invite you and say no? Like, you're, you're annoying. Right? And for example, in the, in the shul, in all of the shuls, they would invite the whole shuls except me. Everybody know I'm not going to come. Everybody know I'm not going to come to any kiddush. Where is the food? Gather my people and I'm going to sit down. Never ever. Okay. So after that, uh, sometimes, so they would offend it one time, three times. Then they leave you alone. Like, like you, like, okay, they friendly, you came. But do they know, like, this thing, he's not going to come. Right? So, I mean, I, mean I, I don't know so what people speak about my bag, but uh, I'm like... Happy is a person who did not sit in a uh, company of the scoffers and Russian Hara speakers. It's not like everybody, but uh, most likely if the people do, are not so such a big uh, Talmide Chachamim and they uh, also, also watch TV sometimes or um, many times sometimes they, they uh, do whatever they do. So I mean, they're going to discuss it. So And I don't want to be part of it because of their food. They're going to buy me for a piece of chicken. I'm going to lose my authority for piece of chicken or meat or or uh, ribs or something you understand so i better eat uh, dry bread and not, not sit with them now I'm, I'm not talking about any specific people maybe they're beautiful maybe nice maybe generous and I, all of the good uh, good attributes but it's better to stay away unless like i don't know there, there is no unless if it's your wedding yeah you, you must show up but if it's not your wedding maybe they can do without you. If they cannot do without you, you're a man and uh, they need uh, tents for a million, yeah, you must go. But if there are like 300 other people, they not, uh, no, like as I said, they uh, like they don't and invite everyone. I, I don't get offended, but other people that they would come to me, they, what, what, why here? You, you're not, uh, you didn't get invited. Like on the Mincha, when you have Mincha, so the, the weddings, of course, on the, on the, on the weekdays, right? So, uh, so on the Mincha all, only comes people who are not regulars, not, not from a regular minion, like from outside people who work around, like from the store, uh, and uh, and people who are not invited. So like I say, Baruch Hashem, nobody invited. Like, uh, I don't even mention, so I could not come and tell them that I, nobody invited. I'm, I'm fine, I'm totally fine. But some people, if they not get invited, it's so sad, so upset. I'm not sure, like, such an empty life. You need to go to the, like, drive somewhere, like, uh, one and a half hours or two hours or, or, or even a half an hour, and there is no parking. What are you going to do? Dump your car? Uh, I don't know, to take the bus, I don't know, to just, just to eat and then drink and then uh, come home late and then you have to wake up in the morning and you drunk. Like, you normal, why do you need that? What a waste of life. Understand? So, so Rambam knew what he was talking about, and life is very short, and we uh, we have to cherish every moment and do not waste all of this uh, socializing. Okay. What else? What else we have? No, there's there's no more questions on the, on the chat. Okay, so any questions from you, Greg? <laughs> um, yeah, I have a few, but I'd rather uh, say them for tomorrow. Okay, so no problem. So save it for tomorrow. So thank you very much, everybody. So let's. Uh, uh, so tomorrow we are going to continue. Bezras Hashem with uh, uh, kosher kitchen. Same time. Please join us. Good night.